So after James warns the rich, you know, the ones who are oppressing the poor and warns them that judgment is coming, he, he switches it, his attention now to the actual victims and says, look, because the Lord is coming, just be patient, just hold on. And, and remember who James is writing to. These are the people who have lost their homes. They were scattered abroad. And now a lot of the places where they're going, because of their faith in Jesus, they were being persecuted. And James starts off this section to them saying with, with two words that are so hard for us today, be patient. He's telling these people, look, I know you're being mistreated. I know these things are happening to you. But he says in verse seven, be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. He's telling them, look, it, we should have this anticipation, just, just like a farmer knows, I got I to wait this out, I got to wait this out, but there's an expectancy. He says, in the same way, and we're terrible at this, you know, we, we want everything right now. Those of you that are going through a difficult time, you want everything to change right now, and, and we all do. We want the suffering to end. But James says, no, think about the farmer. He knows he's got to wait it out. This can't happen right now. He says, just be patient. The Lord is coming. It is happening. I don't know what struggles you're going through in life right now, but the Bible says, hold on. Everything's going to be made right. Just like the wicked will see their day, those who are faithful and holding on and who are established in the Lord, they will receive a reward. Then in verse 9, he says, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. It's interesting here because he's not talking about them getting angry at their oppressors, but now he's saying don't grumble with one another because the judge, God himself, is watching you also. It's this idea, you know how when life gets frustrating and, and maybe you're in a tough situation, you're being oppressed or persecuted in some way, it, it, it almost causes us to become irritable at one another. And that's the picture here, is us as family, as brothers and sisters, that we don't have this annoyance or irritation with each other to be reminded you know what God wants unity and he's watching and the judge is right there and then he continues in, in verse 10 and he says as an example of suffering and patience brothers take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord and behold we consider those blessed who remain steadfast then James encourages us to really take a look at the lives of the prophets. I mean, seriously consider their example. We're talking about people who preached the word of God, even though they were persecuted, and most of them were martyred for what they taught. And James says, think about their example. And he says how we consider them blessed. I, I, I mean, for the last two, 3,000 years, they've been in this state of just absolute joy before the Lord. Like seriously think about the few years that they spent on the life suffering and being patient and waiting for, for the reward that they knew would come. Man, those need to be our examples today. Then he, then he closes off this section in, in kind of a strange way because he says, above all my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. It's kind of strange that he would say, above all, don't swear. Almost seems like it doesn't fit, but it's going along with this theme of this irritation of all the things that are going on in the world, all the persecution that's happening, and, and maybe because they weren't believed, they would say statements like, I swear to God, you know, just to get their voice heard. And, and when they would swear, it was this idea of swearing to someone who was beyond them. But it was the, the idea that God, if I'm lying right now, may God curse me. And what James is saying is like, hey, don't say things like that, okay? Because you don't want to fall under the condemnation of God. God actually hears those things. 
just like he sees everything that's going on in the world, man, just talk. Just let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. But don't say things like, I swear to God. Don't call down the curses of God. There is a God up there who hears everything that's going on. It's just this picture to the people who are being persecuted. And, and I, we all know that our world right now is changing. It's changing fast. A lot of us grew up in a time here in this country where these commands were kind of taken for granted. Now we live in a time where, man, the things that this book teaches, man, they're ridiculed. And there will be people who persecute us because of the teachings in this book. And what James is saying to us is we can't let all of the pressure and even future persecution cause us to get angry with one another, cause us to get frustrated. But instead he says, just hold on. Hold on to, to, to be like that farmer who's waiting, waiting. It's going to happen. Have an expectancy. Christ is going to return. The Bible tells us be patient even unto death and we'll receive the crown of life that God has promised to all those who have loved him. So even now, I don't know what you're going through in life, but take the words of James and be patient and hold on. It's because of this hope that we have, because we know what's coming, that we should be able to endure any type of suffering, just like this, just like all of the prophets did. And just like it was worth it for them, it will be worth it for us. So stand firm and be patient.